Welcome to Room for Thought, the podcast dedicated to helping you find happiness in your daily life. I'm your host, and in today's episode, we'll be exploring the idea of finding happiness in small moments. We often think that happiness is something we have to pursue or achieve, but the truth is, happiness can be found in the simple things in life. So what are small moments of happiness? These are the moments in life that might seem insignificant or mundane, but can bring us a sense of joy and contentment. It could be as simple as enjoying a cup of coffee in the morning or taking a walk in nature. The key is to be present and mindful in these moments, to fully appreciate and savor them. When we slow down and focus on the present moment, we can find happiness and gratitude in even the smallest things. So how can we cultivate a mindset of finding happiness in small moments? One way is to practice gratitude. By focusing on the things we're thankful for, even the small things, we can increase our overall sense of happiness and contentment. Another way is to practice mindfulness. By being fully present in the moment and focusing on our senses, we can deepen our appreciation for the small things in life. Finally, it's important to prioritize self-care and give ourselves permission to enjoy these small moments. We often get caught up in the busyness of life and forget to take time for ourselves, but it's essential for our overall well-being. So that's it for today's episode of Room for Thought. We hope you've learned something new about finding happiness in small moments and how it can impact your overall sense of well-being. Remember, happiness is not always about the big achievements or milestones, but can be found in the simple moments of life. Thanks for listening to Room for Thought. And be sure to tune in next time for another episode on cultivating happiness in your life. Welcome back to Room for Thought, a podcast dedicated to helping you find happiness in your daily life. In today's episode, We'll be exploring the concept of mindfulness and how it can help you live a happier life. We're going to talk about what mindfulness is, how it works, and how you can incorporate it into your daily life. Mindfulness is a practice that has been around for thousands of years, but it's gained a lot of popularity in recent years as a tool for reducing stress and anxiety. It's the act of paying attention to the present moment without judgment, and it's a powerful way to improve your mental well-being. Let's start with the basics. What is mindfulness? At its core, mindfulness is about being present in the moment. It's about paying attention to what's happening right now without worrying about the past or the future. It's about being aware of your thoughts and feelings and accepting them without judgment. So how does mindfulness work? One of the ways that mindfulness can benefit you is by reducing stress and anxiety. When you're present in the moment, you're not worrying about things that have already happened or things that might happen in the future. You're just focused on what's happening right now. And that can be incredibly calming. Another way that mindfulness can benefit you is by improving your relationships. When you're present in the moment, you're more attentive to the people around you. You're better able to listen to them and understand their perspectives, which can lead to deeper and more meaningful connections. So how can you incorporate mindfulness into your daily life? One of the easiest ways is to start with a simple breathing exercise. Find a quiet place where you won't be interrupted. Sit comfortably and take a few deep breaths. Focus on the sensation of your breath as it enters and leaves your body. If your mind starts to wander, gently bring your attention back to your breath. Another way to practice mindfulness is to focus on your senses. Take a moment to really experience the world around you. What do you see, hear, smell, taste, and feel? Pay attention to the details and try to let go of any judgments or preconceptions. Finally, you can practice mindfulness by cultivating a sense of gratitude. Take a few minutes each day to reflect on the things in your life that you're grateful for. It could be something as simple as a good cup of coffee or a kind word from a friend. Focusing on the positive can help shift your perspective and improve your overall sense of well-being. 
So that's it for today's episode of Room for Thought. We hope you've learned something new about mindfulness and how it can help you live a happier life. Remember, happiness is something that we all deserve, and it's within reach if we're willing to put in the effort. Thanks for listening, and be sure to join us next time for another episode of Room for Thought. Welcome back to Room for Thought, the podcast dedicated to helping you find happiness in your daily life. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the power of gratitude and how it can help you cultivate a happier and more fulfilling life. Gratitude is the act of acknowledging and appreciating the good things in your life. It's about focusing on what you have rather than what you lack. And research has shown that practicing gratitude can have a profound impact on your mental and emotional well-being. So how does gratitude work? One of the ways that gratitude can benefit you is by reducing negative emotions such as envy and resentment. When you're focused on what you have, you're less likely to compare yourself to others and feel jealous of their accomplishments. Instead, you're more likely to feel content and satisfied with your own life. Another way that gratitude can benefit you is by improving your relationships. When you express gratitude to others, you're acknowledging the positive impact they've had on your life. This can strengthen your connections and help you build deeper and more meaningful relationships. So how can you incorporate gratitude into your daily life? One simple way is to keep a gratitude journal. Each day, take a few minutes to write down three things that you're grateful for. They can be big or small, but the key is to focus on the positive aspects of your life. Another way to practice gratitude is to express your appreciation to others. Take a moment to thank someone for something they've done for you, whether it's a friend, family member, or coworker. You'll be surprised at how much a simple thank you can mean to someone. Finally, you can practice gratitude by cultivating a mindset of abundance. Instead of focusing on what you don't have, focus on what you do have. Be mindful of the blessings in your life and make an effort to appreciate them. So that's it for today's episode of Room for Thought. We hope you've learned something new about the power of gratitude and how it can help you live a happier life. Remember, cultivating an attitude of gratitude is a simple but powerful way to transform your life for the better. Thanks for listening, and be sure to join us next time for another episode of Room for Thought. Welcome back to Room for Thought, the podcast dedicated to helping you find happiness in your daily life. In today's episode, we're going to be exploring the science of happiness. We'll be looking at what happiness is, how it works, and what you can do to increase your own happiness. So what is happiness? At its core, happiness is a positive emotional state characterized by feelings of joy, contentment, and satisfaction. It's a complex emotion that can be influenced by a wide range of factors, including genetics, environment, and personal experiences. So how does happiness work? Scientists have been studying happiness for decades, and they've discovered it's not just a matter of luck or circumstance. Rather, happiness is something that can be cultivated and developed over time. One of the key factors that influences happiness is our mindset. Research has shown that people who have a positive outlook on life are more likely to experience happiness on a regular basis. They tend to focus on the good in their lives rather than dwelling on the negative. Another factor that influences happiness is our relationships. Studies have shown that people who have strong and supportive relationships with family, friends, and romantic partners tend to be happier than those who are isolated or lack social support. So what can you do to increase your own happiness? One of the most effective strategies is to practice gratitude, as we discussed in a previous episode. By focusing on the positive aspects of your life, you can increase your feelings of contentment and satisfaction. Another strategy is to cultivate a growth mindset. This means viewing challenges and setbacks as opportunities for growth and learning, rather than insurmountable obstacles. Finally, taking care of your physical health can also contribute to your overall happiness. 
Studies have shown that regular exercise, healthy eating habits, and adequate sleep can all have a positive impact on mood and emotional well-being. So that's it for today's episode of Room for Thought. We hope you've learned something new about the science of happiness and how you can increase your own happiness levels. Remember, happiness is something that can be cultivated and developed over time, so don't give up if you don't feel happy all the time. Thanks for listening, and be sure to join us next time for another episode of Room for Thought. Welcome back to Room for Thought, the podcast dedicated to helping you find happiness in your daily life. In today's episode, we're going to be exploring the art of letting go. We'll be looking at what it means to let go, why it's important, and how you can cultivate the skill of letting go. So, what does it mean to let go? Letting go is the process of releasing attachments to people, situations, or emotions that are no longer serving you. It's about freeing yourself from the burden of negative thoughts and emotions and allowing yourself to move forward with greater clarity and purpose. So why is letting go important? Holding on to negative thoughts and emotions can have a serious impact on your mental and emotional well-being. It can cause stress, anxiety, and even physical health problems. Letting go can help you release these negative emotions and move towards a more positive and fulfilling life. So how can you cultivate the skill of letting go? One of the first steps is to acknowledge and accept your emotions. Instead of suppressing or denying them, allow yourself to feel them fully. This can be difficult, but it's an essential part of the letting go process. Another step is to practice mindfulness. By being present in the moment and focusing on your breath, you can develop greater awareness of your thoughts and emotions. This can help you recognize when you're holding on to negative feelings and let them go more easily. Finally, it's important to have self-compassion. Letting go is not always easy, and it's okay to struggle with it. Treat yourself with kindness and understanding, and don't judge yourself for having difficulty letting go. So that's it for today's episode of Room for Thought and for our podcast series. We hope you've learned something new about the art of letting go and how it can help you find greater happiness and fulfillment in your life. Remember, letting go is a skill that can be developed and refined over time. So be patient with yourself and keep practicing. Thanks for listening to Room for Thought. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast series and that you found value in the topics we've covered. Remember to keep exploring new ways to cultivate happiness and fulfillment in your life and to always make room for thought. Mm